We're gonna turn these gorgeous vessels into these gorgeous candles. Let's get started. Hi everyone, welcome to today's video. My name is Wade with Black Tie Barn, and I'm gonna be checking out these vessels, gorgeous vessels by the way, uh, from Ambrosina Candle Vessel Company. And I'm gonna tell you a little bit about the vessels. We're going to take a peek at all of these because there's a lot of different colors. They just, they look great, and there's a couple different options as well. Now in front of me, I think I have 11 different vessels, at least different colors and options. I'm gonna choose six of them and make six different candles, hopefully good looking candles. So raise your hand if you are excited to get started on these like I am. Humor me. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and get these out of these little cartons that they came in. And actually you could probably pour your candles in these cartons if you wanted. Um, but I'm gonna go ahead and take them out just so we have a better look at everything. And while I'm doing that, I'm gonna go ahead and tell you a little bit about the vessels and some things I've already noticed that are noteworthy about them. So yeah, as I mentioned, as you can see here, we've got a gorgeous selection of different vessels here. And the first thing worth mentioning is that among these vessels, there's really two types. You've got a matte finish, which they call their Picasso collection, I believe, which have a really nice, modern, sophisticated matte finish. And I'm gonna show you a few different ones here. And they've got a several different colors, some very unique colors. And the majority of the ones sent to me are this matte finish, which I actually prefer, at least I think I'm going to prefer. But as you can see, we've got really, really good looking vessels here. I, I Hopefully I got them all for you. But the other option is these standard kind of gloss. And I forgot the name of what they call this collection, but this is your gloss, high gloss rather than matte finish. And these high gloss are more traditional luxury style jars. And they've got the bottom kind of see-through glass uh, base on them. But again, very, very nice looking. In fact, that color right there is gorgeous. Uh, they also sent a red one in this one too, just to give you a difference. And you can see if I hold up the two, the difference between the matte, well, hopefully the camera shows the difference between the matte and the gloss. And then uh, this last one here is kind of this kind of roses goldish. I can't really describe it very well, but almost like a plum color, really, really pretty. Now they are the same size, same shape, just a different, uh, really just a different coating on them. Now when it comes to some of these colored vessels, sometimes on the inside of these, you can see kind of what that spray looks like. It just depends on the color, if it's really visible or not. And sometimes you don't really notice anything at all. I just really look to make sure that that's not visible on the outside. And I'm not seeing any indication of that. They all look very, very good on the outside. Um, in fact, I mean, they look good on the inside too. Now, one thing to point out too, and I'll pick a light colored one, you can probably see it better, is on the bottom of each vessel, they have an indent, which is a good spot for a warning label. And the nice thing about this is that indent allows a nice, solid surface so there's no bumps there's no raises there's no markings or anything like that so the uh so the warning label should look really really good on it now a little bit of a character you know bump or flaw or something like that on the bottom isn't going to bother me when i'm putting a warning label on but i do like that there's no like obvious writing or anything on it's just a nice good surface for the warning labels additionally they also sell boxes that fit their jars perfectly uh, they've got a white option and a black option uh, they both look really, really nice. Um, let's take a look at this black option here. You can see it's just a nice solid cover box at the top. And just to show you, if we put one of these in, it is a perfect fit. Very, very nice. And if I shake it around a little bit, hardly any rattle at all. It's a really good, good solid fit. So for those of you that, uh, first of all, want more of an upscale look, these look really nice. It's a great way to package them and when you ship them, it's actually easier. You don't have to do near as much packaging around the outside because this is already adding a layer of protection. Okay, I don't know why I just closed that box. I need that. All right, I'm gonna set the boxes aside. Go ahead and choose the, the colors that we're gonna work with to make some test candles. All right, so I stepped away and I thought about this for a minute and here's what I'm going to choose. And in the orange, we're gonna do toasted pumpkin spice from Candle Science. In this matte red, we are gonna do Macintosh Apple. We're gonna use this white for a kind of just clean cotton fragrance. I'm going to do this matte brown for a tobacco fragrance. And then I'm going to use this matte kind of smokish gray for a Indian sandalwood. And then last but not least, I'm gonna do one of these high gloss finishes and more transparent. And I'm gonna do that kind of plum burgundy orchid pink color. And I'm gonna do sea salt and orchid in that one. So these are the six I selected, just uh, just kind of random and uh, yeah. So again, there is a yellow, a green, a different color blue. Uh, and then of course there is the black one as well. Okay, so I've never used these jars. 
which means I've certainly never used these jars with these different fragrances that I'm gonna use. So I'm gonna be used this as an opportunity to also test some wick options as well. So I'm gonna be using uh, six different wick options. And then as I get to each one of these, I'll tell you what I'm using for the wicks. Now, many of you that have been on this channel for a long time know that I like to use a lot of color in my candles as well. But since these jars are already colored and I'm already experimenting with six different jars with six different oils and six different wick options, I'm just gonna leave them all natural colored and leave the dye out this time, so. Hopefully that's okay with you guys. And many of you are probably wondering what wax we're gonna be using today. Again, I'm trying to control variables here. I'm really just wanting to test uh, these jars more than anything um, and see how they look. So I'm gonna keep the wax uh, the same as well. And we're gonna be using Soy Pour 1280 Wax, which is a 50-50 pair of soy blend. It's got a low melt point around 120 to 125. Um, and uh, yeah, it's a good all around wax. So I'm gonna go ahead and prep all the wicks right now. We're gonna be using a combination of cotton wicks and wood wicks. And then, like I said, once we get to each jar, I'll let you know specifically what we're using. All right, so. I forgot to mention earlier that these vessels, I think, hold about 13 ounces worth of wax. I am going to um, keep this really simple on the math, and we're going to do a 10% fragrance load, 12 ounces of wax, and 1.2 um, ounces of fragrance oil. I'm just going to do that the same across the board. Um, the only one that might be a little short um, is going to be this smoky gray for the Indian sandalwood. Because I only have some shorter wicks for these ones, I can replace it later if I need to, but that'll be the only one that's probably less filled than the others. All right, let's get to our first one here, which is going to be the Macintosh apple. And I'm gonna go ahead and get these wicks in. All right, so we've got our Macintosh apple here with two Premier 720s. Let's go ahead and get our wax and get going. All right, now this particular wax is very forgiving. We've got our 12 ounces of wax here. You can work with this wax at a lot of different temperatures. Uh, when doing small batches like this, and I'm not having to stir large tanks or pots at, a, at one time, I like to work in slightly lower temperatures because I don't need to stir it near as long. So I'm gonna go ahead and tear the scale out and I'm going to add 1.2 ounces. Now I should say to new candle makers, I don't advise uh, weighing your fragrance oil directly into your pot of wax. There's just a lot higher risk of, of making a mistake. But again, this is just a test and I've been doing this quite a bit that I'm fairly comfortable and confident doing this. Um, but if you're not, then definitely weigh your fragrance oil separately and then pour it in. I would not really do this uh, for normal production purposes though. So I'm gonna get this well incorporated. Again, we're not gonna be using any dye and I'm just gonna let this cool down. And with this wax, you can pour anywhere from 100 30 all the way up to 160 degrees and still get good results. A lot of it's gonna depend on the size and the shape of your vessel. Um, I'm just kind of experimenting with this one. I'm gonna go ahead and pour on the lower end around 130 degrees, 135, somewhere in that range. Now, because I don't use these jars normally this first time, I don't have uh, wick clips that fit perfectly, or at least that I would normally use. However, I do have some of these from Wicket that I think are going to fit pretty well. Actually, I tried them a little bit right before and they fit, fit nicely. So fortunately, I've got these to work with. Now they are designed to hold wicks that are a little bit thicker than this. So hopefully they hold, but I think they're gonna do a good job. So I'm gonna set that aside. All right, so the next one I'm gonna do is Orchid in this gorgeous kind of plum colored, more transparent gloss jar. And in this one, we are using two HTP 62 wicks. Let's go ahead and get our wax. All right, we've got our 12 ounces of wax. I'm gonna go add about 1.2 ounces of sea salt and orchid. Now in an effort to speed up the video, I'm not gonna show all the uh, seconds and minutes of stirring throughout this whole process. So I will speed up parts of the video just to keep things moving along. Sea salt and orchid is this great mix of a, of a floral with a little bit of sweetness. Uh, it, it's an awesome fragrance. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and put another one of these Wicket uh, Wick Clips on. Now, for those of you who don't have something like this, these typical Wick Clips that you can get from Amazon or anywhere else, uh, these will work just fine. These bow, bow tie clips is what they're called. 
These ones will fit these jars, barely, but they do fit it. The jar is just wide enough that these still work. Alternatively, if you really ever run into a bind, something that I did a long time ago is you took some popsicle sticks and put in three holes, one for a single wick, or you can two wick with it or three wick with it, and you just set it on top and put it where you need to. Now there's nothing to really hold it in place. You just gotta kind of sit it there and be careful and check on it, make sure it doesn't move, but it does work in a pinch. All right, next up is our clean cotton fragrance. And uh, this one, we're gonna be using two Eco Ones. Now I have a lot of different kind of fresh linen, clean cotton type of scents. I, they're very, I don't know, classic. Uh, there's nothing super unique about them. All, some of them are like orchid and sea salt is kind of a spin off a of clean fragrance, but uh, I just like these natural kind of laundry smelling fragrances myself. While I'm stirring this, as far as labeling goes, I thought about, you know, should I make up some quick labels that are something different for these vessels? Or I think I might actually just use some of my standard kind of signature line labels. I think they would look good and fit on these pretty well. So I'll probably go that route and uh, we'll see how they look. All right, this is the last of our cotton wicks that we're gonna do. Oh God, struggling. Wow, struggling on like literally the easiest part, which is just putting it on the vessel. All right, so we are on to our wooden wicks. I'm gonna start with our sweet tobacco fragrance. And this one is gonna be using a 0 0.03, 5 8 inch standard crackling wick. Now this one, we're gonna be using a tobacco fragrance from Aztec. I really like most tobacco fragrances that I've used. Uh, some are a little bit more, I guess, sweeter than others. Some are a little bit more earthy than others, but I don't know that I've found a tobacco fragrance that I don't really like. Uh, they just all smell really, really good. And they were good to mix with other fragrances as well sometimes. All right, and yeah, I just love the smell of this. All right, now we'll trim this wick down after it's all firmed up just like the rest. Now, the good thing about wooden wicks is you don't need to clip for them. Now, you can clip them uh, to kind of keep them in the middle if, you, if you're worried about it. Um, and there have been times where I have done it. In fact, Wicket, the, the ones that we're using for the cotton wicks, make some as well. I really only use it if I feel like it's necessary for some reason, like the clip itself wasn't holding the wick very tight or something like that. But in this case, it didn't move. It's perfect in the center. I'm just going to leave it as is and push it to the side. And the next one we're going to do is Indian sandalwood in this smoky kind of grayish color. Uh, but again, I don't have a wick long enough for this one, so I'm going to pour this one a little shorter than the others. Hey, good news. I lied. I found a longer 0 0.03 half inch wick, so we're good to go. Now we're talking. I'm going to tear our scale to zero. We're going to add 1.2 ounces of Indian sandalwood. You know, it's got really an incense type vibe to it. If you like that, you'll like this fragrance. And this Indian sandalwood is from Nature's Garden, by the way. Now this one, I'm going to pour a couple degrees hotter than the others, just because I want to see if it sets up a little differently at all. Last but not least, we're going to be using a pumpkin spice pump, shoot, I forgot the name of it. Toasted pumpkin spice. I have never used this fragrance before. Oh, and by the way, for anyone that's wondering um, about my wax or where it's coming from, it's actually just out of camera. And I, I've just been touching wax and oils that I just don't want to move the camera equipment around, but I'm just using my Digiboil to melt down a wax for this purpose. You can use a Presto pot or a double boiler or a wax melter tank. It, it really doesn't matter. But that is why I'm jumping straight to the wax in the pouring pot. All right, so here we go. I've got our wax ready. We're gonna add our toasted pumpkin spice. I've never smelled this fragrance before, so here we go. Kind of smells like pumpkin pie. Probably not super shocking to most of you. Really, really good fragrance. Ooh, I like this one. I've got a lot of pumpkin fragrances. I've had other pumpkin pie fragrances that weren't really very strong. I don't think that's gonna be an issue, this one. This one smells Really, really on point. Oh yeah, it smells good. It smells really, really good. I'm not a big fan of like pumpkin in general, but I've got a pumpkin bake fragrance that's really good and this pumpkin pie that I'm smelling out of this one. Pump toasted pumpkin spice is what it's called, but it smells a lot like pumpkin pie and it's really good. And let's be honest, pumpkin pie smells way better than it actually tastes. I mean, am I right? And also, yes, anyone that's curious, I am um, wiping down the uh, the mixing spoon and the pouring pitcher in between fragrances. Just a little paper towel, a little uh, spritz of rubbing alcohol is all you really need. If it starts to solidify on you in the pouring pot, a little heat gun uh, can help as well. All right, so there we go. Uh, we've got that one done as well. Now, again, we're not looking for perfection here, right? We're just trying to make some good testers, you know, see what these vessels look like, test some new fragrances while we're at it. Yeah, just having some fun here. Uh, so I'm gonna show you what we've got so far, and then I'm gonna let them cool down, and I'll come back and show you the final results, maybe throw some labels on there and see what we're working with. So hang tight, I'll be right back. All 
All right, everyone, I am back. And as you can see, these turned out pretty good, pretty nice for just uh, quick testers we put together. This is a quick look at that orchid in the transparent gloss jar. Then we've got the cotton uh, in the white jar, and I think that turned out really nice as well. Red apple. Uh, I think all these labels that I used um, from my standard collection actually look really good on these jars. And there's your pumpkin pie. And next up, we have the Sweet Tobacco Fields. And then this last wooden wick, I went with a different label. I just wanted to see what a different kind of label would look like on one of these jars. So uh, threw that on there as well. And here I just uh, wanted to go ahead and light it and take a look at, I don't know, one, one final look at the final product here. Um, again, I think they turned out really, really nice. Now you can see some cosmetic defects on the top around the rim of the wax. Um, that's an indication that I probably poured them a little too cool. And so that top layer was uh, was solidifying a little too fast and uh, sticking to the side of the wall and then not really settling with the rest of the wax. So next time I would pour in these particular vessels, I probably would increase uh, the pour temperature by about five degrees. But otherwise, I think they turned out great. Let me know in the comments what you think about the vessels and how you think these just turned out in general. Also, if you are curious about how the burn test to go, make sure you subscribe to the channel. Just hit subscribe below. Well, firstly, that will allow you to be notified whenever I post new videos. But I will also post on the community tab here on YouTube the results of these burn tests and let you know which ones actually burned well, which ones didn't. And uh, yeah, just to let you know some general feedback. So make sure you subscribe to the channel if you're not already, because I will let everyone know how it went. Thanks for watching. As always, hope you guys enjoyed this video. These vessels watched me make these test candles. And with that in mind, check out this next video and I'll see you all next time. Thanks.